standing and Holy Ghost, Holy Lives, Holiness. That's how important the Holy Ghost is. The vast resources of the Spirit are for each and all. Somebody say all. all. Not for some. All. Not for some of the church, not for the pastors and ministers and evangelists only. It's for every one of us yes. in Christ. Yes. Christians everywhere desire more comprehensive or firm or great knowledge of the person and work of the Holy Spirit. We need to know how the Spirit's fullness can be received, how the fullness of the Spirit can be received. We need to know these things. How can I fully grasp the fullness of the Spirit? <coughs> Not only do we need to receive the fullness of the Spirit, but we need to be able to retain the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Not have it today and don't have it tomorrow. Misconception and ignorance are responsible for weakness and ineffectiveness in our Christian life and labor. <coughs> if only the Spirit could come into His own. If only the Spirit can come into His own, lives would be rich. Somebody say rich. Rich. Let me tell you something. You think you're rich? Hallelujah. You're rich when you have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I said you're rich when you have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. You're richer than those that have millions. Richer than the king, the queen. Because what you got, they don't have. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is powerful. The Holy Ghost is so rich. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Let me say this. The Holy Ghost is the basic foundation of our Christian faith. Yes. This is the foundation of our faith. This is how it started, the church. So why should we neglect it now? Lives will be rich in fruitfulness and fragrance with the perfume of Christ. Let me say this, and I want you to listen carefully. And I say this with no apologies. When you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need to be on the prayer line every Sunday. Hello in here. Amen. Amen. Let me repeat that. When you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need to be on the prayer line every Sunday. Praise the Lord. Pass the prayer for me. Next Sunday you're back. Pass the prayer for me. Next Sunday, pastor, the same thing over and over again. I'm not saying that we don't need prayer. I'm not saying that we don't carry sickness. But the Bible lets us know, he said, let the sick see him heal. Yeah. 
And I rebuke anyone who gets up and testifies Sunday after Sunday. I'm so sick. I'm so sick. I'm so You're giving the devil praise. Yes, yes I'm sick. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I'm healed because God said I'm healed. If you continue to say I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, they're going to be sick. Yes. But instead of coming up here every Sunday, pass the prayer for me, pass the prayer for me, give them the very pastors out. You should be praying for that pastor. When you have the Holy Ghost, you don't need the pastor to pray for you all the time. You have to pray for the pastor. Lord, strengthen him. Lord, keep him. Continue to feed him with the word. I thought I said I wasn't going to preach. <laughs> but it's true. The anointing makes the difference. Every last one of us in here today don't leave this place without the anointing of God upon your lives. And we have the anointing. The devil can't sit comfortable in the church. Hallelujah. When we have the anointing, it makes the work of the pastor easier. Because we be one, one accord, in one place, in one mind. When we are in one accord, when we are in one spirit, hallelujah, there's no telling what God can do. Praise God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel this thing coming on. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't leave here without it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of scriptures. Hallelujah. Type them up and put them to the back. Because I can't get into everything today. Praise God. 